Okay, continuing on Santa Claus, we leave off on the fourth study. In Germany and Poland, boys dressed as bishops. What were those words again? Let's go back. Key words, Catholic, priest, New York, traditions, images, and then Coca-Cola. Number four lesson. We just began the fourth lesson, page eight of this book. You can get a copy of it if I still got it. Catholic, 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 Catholic. And I'm not saying it. The truth, the evidence that I have acclaimed and written down and documented. And this is written for Bible-believing Christians. Would you send your children to a Catholic church and trust them with their souls? And yet, you got this Catholic who no one has documented there's lies about this man. And now in Germany and Poland, boys dress as bishops beg for alms for the poor. Now, evidently, Lord willing, they have not studied what we're going to study in Matthew tonight in chapter 6 about almsgiving if the Lord tarries and sometimes for themselves so they would say it's for the poor and then it'd be for themselves December 6 is still the main day for gift giving and merrymaking in much of Europe well, remember that's the Roman Catholic day dedicated to Saint Nicholas the honoring of a man where the Bible says we're to honor no man but the man, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now they're going around begging for alms for the poor. Sounds like a little like Halloween to me. You send your child out to get candy. This is a, this is a holiday version of welfare. Well, Nicholas never took anything but the boys do. But the boys do. Mr. Nicholas didn't take nothing. But these boys that imitate him dressing as bishops take things. Well, that's the bishops of the church. They take, 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 and they don't give anything back to the people. Halloween involves a day of the dead. December 6th, Mr. Nicholas's death. That's the day that Mr. Nicholas died. So you're honoring a day of the dead of a dead man by a dead church. They dress up like bishops. Halloween. What do you mean? Costumes? King Saul did that to go see the Witch of Endor and had a seance. You remember that in the Bible? Look up, if you don't know, look up Saul, the Witch of Endor, and Samuel, who was a rest, who was asleep. They beg for money like trick or treating here is money today it's candy so santa and mr nicholas celebration is like halloween it's only in the winter i guess when all the candy runs out we go for the money when all that candy of, of october 31st runs out december 6th we go for the money so we are looking for food and money. That is your American welfare system right there. If I don't know what else the welfare system is, set by the Catholic Church, I don't know what else can be. The example. What was the president about welfare? What was his religion? As bishop, oh you mean, Luke 20, 46. Beware of the scribes which desire to walk in long robes they dress like bishop and love greetings in the marketplace markets and the highest seats in the synagogue and the chief rooms at the feast dressing up making oneself known and the food judges 17 10 Micah said unto him dwell with me and he be un dwell with me and be unto me a father and a priest judges 17 10 and I will give thee ten shekels of silver by year 
a suit of apparel, and thy victuals. So the Levite went in. So here's a priest. He's hired by a man to be a father and priest. He's getting a wage by year. He's getting a salary. He gets a suit of apparel and food. That's the Roman Catholic Church in Judges 17.10, long before you even heard the name Catholic. So, do you know that all the Roman Catholic Church continues the church members are poor and they give unto the rich, the, the church priests, the nuns, and what have you. The poor people give to the church and the church, their, their priests, their nuns, and all their hierarchies get the money and they don't do anything for the people. Look at the Roman Catholic nations and lands that that church supports, like Mexico, like these third world nations. They're poor, they're broke. And yet their churches have gold and diamonds and silver and gold. Uh, so why do you dress up like a bishop? That was the occupation of Mr. Nicholas, if you remember back in uh, number two and number three's lesson. That was his occupation. It was with his occupation that they imitated it. Maybe just maybe Mr. Nicholas, Mr. Nicholas begged for alms too. You say, ah, oh, Mr. Nicholas wouldn't beg for alms. Oh, people, if you don't send a million dollars, our radio program's gonna go off the air. If you don't send a love offering, our church will have to close the doors and we'll be in trouble. If you don't give us money, the children are gonna die over in this country. If we're in a cup of a cup of coffee a day, you can help. Sound familiar? Well, you see, when I was a Catholic, I used to get in the mail envelopes to put my offering in and I didn't have to go to church to put my offering in. I could have sent it by the mail by their envelopes. Maybe Mr. Nicholas, like his church, begged for alms too. Maybe the credit is in the wrong person. So, one story tells of a poor man with three daughters. In those days, a young woman's father had to offer soon-to-be husbands something of value a dowry the larger the dowry the better the chance for a young woman could find a good husband hmm. kind of weird to me but the poor man's daughters without dowries were therefore destined to be sold into slavery hmm. under what nation under what church Mysteriously, on three different occasions, a bag of gold appeared in their home to provide the needs of their dowries. The bags of gold tossed through an open window are said to have landed in stockings or shoes left before the fire to dry. This led to the custom tradition of children hanging stockings or putting out shoes, eagerly waiting gifts from St. Nicholas. You mean receiving stuff from other people that they did not pay for. Welfare. They are making a list, not to Jesus by prayer, but to St. Nicholas in hopes to get gold or candy, Halloween, or money on December 6th. So they got a prayer life to Mr. Nicholas and not to Jesus. They are wanting something from somebody else that they did not work for. Socialism in St. Nicholas. Sometimes the story is told with gold balls instead of bags of gold. This is why three gold balls, sometimes represented as oranges, are one of the symbols of St. Nicholas. Proof? Nowhere. There's no proof of this. And they say sometimes gold balls, sometimes bags, sometimes oranges. But again, there's no proof. It's a story. It is once upon a time there were three girls and they were just so poor and came this fat guy and threw gold through the... I mean, 
So which is it? Balls, oranges, or bags? If it were a fact, it would have been re recorded in print. What is the secret? And why do Baptist churches have a secret Santa? Here's a guy throwing money around, wasting. Secret Santa. No one knows. Several stories tell of Nicholas and the sea. When he was young, Nicholas sought he Nicholas sought the holy by making a pilgrimage. <clears throat> excuse me. My throat. Pilgrimage. There's another religious word. To the holy land. There, as he walked where Jesus walked, he sought to more deeply experience Jesus' life, passion, and resurrection. Resurrection? Doesn't this guy come out of the grave every December 24th and return December 25th? That Santa Claus is supposed to be an ambassador of St. Nicholas. St. Nicholas is in his crypt having some kind of manna that is sealed under his his cathedral and yet he pops up at Christmas. Oh, okay. I see resurrection. Returning by sea, a mighty storm threatened to wreck the ship. Nicholas calmly prayed. The terrified sailors were amazed when the wind and wave suddenly calmed sparing them all and so saint nicholas is the patron of sailors and voyagers proof documented proof in ships logs written by the captain of the ship nowhere even the television ships log star date blah, 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 blah. there is no records of this gentleman being on any boat any captain writing this down or anybody contacting the newspapers that be in print but let's look at this story shall we mark 4 37 to 41 and there rose a great storm of wind uh oh and the waves beat into the ship uh oh so that it was now full and he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow and they awake him and said unto master Carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and abuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto him, Where, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, saying one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and sea obey him? Luke 8. 23 25 but as they sailed he fell asleep and there came down a storm of wind on the lake and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy and they came to him and awoke him saying master master we perish then he arose and rebuked the wind in the raging water and they ceased and there was a calm and he said unto him where is your faith and they being afraid wonder saying one to another what manner of man is this for he commandeth even the winds in water, and they obey him. They stole, what I just read to you, several stories about the sea. He sought to deeply experience Jesus' life, passion, resurrection. Returning by sea, a mighty storm threatened to wreck the ship. Nicholas calmly prayed. The terrified sailors were amazed when the wind and waves suddenly calmed, sparing them all. They stole that story from the Gospel of Mark. They stole that story from the Gospel of Luke. They have given a, a true fact of Jesus and applied it to Mr. Nicholas. Look at that. Antichrist. He stole from Jesus Christ. How about that? Their story is a Bible perversion like any modern Bible.
they removed Jesus' name and added Mr. Nicholas' name and gave Mr. Nicholas the credit and the, the title of patron saint of sailors and voyagers. Do you remember the first four disciples that Jesus chose? Peter, Andrew, James, and John. What were they doing? They were fishermen. Peter and Andrew were fishing. James and John were fixing their nets. Just like they just like they had done in the book of Judges. And again, you say how? They removed the name Samson and added Hercules instead of Samson. They gave them their God's name, their man's name, and not a Bible, Jewish name. Again, I never have read Mr. Nicholas refuting or calling these events a lot. He had to have been alive when he calmed these storms. So when the stories got around, why didn't he publicly stand up and say, I'm sorry, folks, that story is a lie. Never. You mean to tell me he allowed people to think of him as Jesus Christ and the disciples in the ship in the storm? Mr. Nicholas allowed that story that copied Mark for Luke 8. He allowed that story to be circulated and never refuted it, never rebuked it, and made people think that he and the disciples of Jesus were likened to him. What a, what a blasphemy. And you got your children in this mess? What I truly mean is Mr. Nicholas never spoke out to say the story is not true. So either his claim it was true or he enjoyed or allowed the lie to be John 8.44. In the eyes of Catholics, a saint is someone who has lived such a holy life that after dying and going to heaven, he or she is able to help people on earth. Ooh, spirit world. That's not in the Bible. There are, <clears throat> excuse me, there are three saints, the word, in the Bible. Psalms 106.16. They envied Moses also in the camp. And Aaron, the saint of the Lord, Aaron was alive, and he was a saint. Daniel 8, 13. Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto the certain saint which spake, How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression and desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot. In Philippians 4.21, slew every saint in Christ Jesus. The brethren which are with me greet you, Paul said, to salute dead men? I don't think so. See, the Catholic, in order to be saint, you got to be dead. In the Bible, in order to be a saint, you're alive. Paul said, salute every saint. How you doing? How you doing? Shake your hand. Good morning. Good afternoon. You talk to live people. When was the last time you walked up to a dead body? Hi, how you doing? So we see the church that brings us St. Nicholas. That will bring us Santa Claus. Worshipping the dead. December 6th, dressing up for welfare, for food, and for candy, and for money, coming up with all these Bible stories, but just changing the name to protect the innocent, I guess, and doctrines which don't match the Bible, using Bible words which are not proper for them, 95 saints and one saint in the King James Bible. And let's look at a few to prove they are not dead. Second Chronicles 6.41 Now therefore arise, O Lord God, into thy resting place, thou and the ark of thy strength. 
Let thy priests, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation. Let thy saints rejoice in goodness. Rejoice. Job 15, 15. Behold, he putteth no trust in his saints. Psalms 30, verse 4. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his. Psalm 31, 23. O love the Lord, O ye saints. Psalm 34, 9. O fear the Lord, ye saints. Psalm 39, 7. God is greatly to be a Feared in assembly of the saints. Psalms 116, 15. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. There's dying from someone who was alive called a saint. Revelation 8, 4. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints. Revelation 14, 12. Here is the patience of the saints. 1 Timothy 5.10 Well report of you good works, if she has brought up children, if she has lodged strangers, if she has washed the saints' feet. You mean to tell me that here's a widow woman washing dead man's feet? I don't believe it. you got to be alive to be a saint, according to the Bible. Colossians 1.2 to, to the saints and the faithful brethren in Christ. Philippians 4, 22, all the saints salute you. And some of you are just ready to spit out nails at me. You're ready to crucify me. You're ready to put me in a grave because I have spoken to you the truth through the Bible. A saint is not someone who has died. It's someone living, serving the Lord God. Again, a word taken by the Roman Catholic Church and used to their own purpose, defying, going against the word of God and set traditions and yes jesus mentions dead saints oh matthew 27 52 and the graves were open and many of the bodies of saints which slept arose matthew 22 32 i am the god of abraham the god of isaac the god of jacob god is not the god of dead but of the living mark 12 27 he is not the god of the dead but the god of the living Ye therefore do greatly err. Luke 20, 38. For he is not a God of the dead, but the God of the living. For all live unto him. So Matthew 27, 52, he says, When the graves were opened, and many of the body of the saints that which slept arose. There is no death when you are in, when you are in God. Now for the Old Testament saints, before Jesus Christ arose from the grave, before he died on the cross, before he was buried, and the resurrection they went to Abraham's bosom they slept in Abraham's bosom they didn't go to hell now when you don't go to hell you go to Abraham's bosom or to be absent from the body and present with the Lord that's talking about life so when you call a dead man who's in God or in Christ a saint he's not dead as Jesus told us three times the three Gospels, I, he, God is not the God of the dead. He's the God of the living. So someone that dies in God or Jesus Christ, they're not dead. They're still alive. They're just either in Abraham's bosom or they are in glory. So absent from the body, present with the Lord. To, 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 to take your last breath here, wake up in Abraham's bosom. That's life. You're still a saint when you're alive. There are no saints in hell because they've died. They perish, the Bible said. You got to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth, which one church and one of all the, the magistrates of that church and all the priests of that church and all the instructors of that church can't read the Bible and can't study the Bible. In the 1500s, people in England stopped worshiping St. Nicholas. And favored more another gift-giving figure, Father Christmas. So now we have taken Mr. Nicholas and gave him the title. Ready for this? Drum roll. Father. Do you know somebody who, who is a man that is given the title of Father Victor of Christ, who's a Catholic and has stolen the title of God and Jesus Christ. We are moving along these lines.
Now, whoever St. Nicholas was by the church, Mr. Nicholas to me, whoever he was, he is now by his church evolving from a man who has died, a man that was living. He has vowed his life to be Jesus Christ and the disciples, calming storms. And by the 1500s in England, he has now become God the Father. Father Christmas. That's with a capital F. The Puritans made it illegal to mention St. Nicholas' name. I, I put St. Nicholas. That's amen to the Puritans. People were not allowed to exchange gifts. Amen to the Puritans. Light a candle, amen to the period, or sing Christmas carols, amen. Christmas carols are sung in Baptist churches in 2015 and will be sung in 2016 if the Lord tarries. Who are you serving? You can't serve God and mammon. This guy is mammon. He is not, oh, Father Christmas. He's going to make himself God so he'll get the worship. And Satan said to Jesus, if you'll fall down and worship me. That's interesting. Santa Claus. Ooh, I'm Santa Claus now. Trace back to a monk or bishop, a Catholic saint, Nicholas. Santa Claus, the man now, he can be traced back to that monk or that bishop, the Catholic, Mr. Nicholas. That's Santa Claus. He comes from Mr. Nicholas, who we've been studying. Webster's, a man who is a member of a religious order and lives in a monastery. Nowhere in the Bible is a man neither in the monastery nor apart from the world. John 17, 11 through 18. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father, keep thou thy own name, those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee. These things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou should take them out of the world, but that thou shouldst keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. Jesus, with his apostles, praying to God, said, no, you know, don't go live in the monastery. Go in the world, go in you know, all the world, and preach the gospel. Santa Claus is the subject of many legends. Webster's 1828 Dictionary again. A story from the past that is believed by many people but cannot be proved to be true. What did Webster say? Cannot be proved to be true. I didn't say that. Webster, the author of the dictionary. No Webster. Unlike Jesus Christ, where his life is a proven historical fact that even his very enemies testified he was real and was true. If, can I say thousands, if not millions of people witnessed the person of the Lord Jesus Christ from his birth? Mary, Joseph, the shepherds to his death, the Roman rulers, the Sanhedrin, Mary, John, the Roman soldiers, and his resurrection. 1 Corinthians 15, 6. 
And after that, he was seen above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some have fallen asleep. No one has ever seen Santa Claus, not even NORAD, as we will discuss that later. But 500 people are recorded to see the resurrected Christ through the ministry of Jesus from 30 years old to 33 and a half years old. Thousands, but maybe millions of people witnessed the Lord Jesus Christ, the, the, the healing, the removing of the devils from people, from talking, from preaching, from feeding, witness. He was witnessed in, in the manger by his mother, by his father, maybe family members. The shepherds came at that point. He's about two or three years old, and the three wise men with their caravan come to Jesus and witnessed him. Jesus Christ is a proven visual fact. Give me a true, unaltered, unphotoshopped photo of, G of Santa Claus and I'll believe it. And yet with all the f smartphones, with all the picture phones today that are now available, with all the pictures that can be taken, there is no true picture of Santa Claus because there is no Santa Claus. Call 911. Someone probably just had a heart attack. New York. 1773-1774. Groups of the Dutch had gathered to honor his anniversary. The St. Nicholas. That's what they St. Nicholas death. Feast days December 6th, the death of Mr. Nicholas. Santa Claus. Dutch nickname Sinter Claus. S-I-N-T-E-R-K-L-A-A-S. Saint Nicholas. So we have a match between two men. We have a match between Mr. Nicholas and Santa Claus. Brought to you by the Dutch. He wore a white bishop's alb. A-L-B. This is Santa Claus. We are off Mr. Nicholas now, except for when Mr. Nicholas comes to play with Santa Claus. Santa Claus wore a white bishop's hob. You wouldn't say that today, but this is this is him. Well, so would have Mr. Nicholas, a bishop of the Roman Catholic Church, wore that same bishop's outfit. The ob, A-L-B, from Latin albus, A-L-B-U-S, meaning white you read in the Bible where, where Jesus wore white again they are stealing from Jesus Christ and you think this is innocent for a Bible believing saved household you're letting Satan come down your chimney or however he gets in your house. No matter how he gets in the house, the doors are locked. That's B and E. That means breaking and entry. One of the liturgical vestments of the Roman Catholic, Angela, I can never say it, and Angel, Angelican, Lutheran, and many Methodist churches. It's an ample white garment coming down to the knees and is usually girded with a sicter. I'm not very good at pronouncing words, so forgive me. Somebody will use it, you know, to disprove this whole thing because Stolly Haver can't speak. Oh. C I N C T U R E. That's why I'm spelling it. Don't use my mispronunciation words as an excuse to go on with Satan. It is simply the long linen tunic used by the Romans. In early medieval medieval Europe it was also normally worn by secular clergy see the church 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 outfits remember when we read in judges they he was given an outfit to be worn as a priest outfit 
recognized by the Roman Catholic Church. A Roman Catholic Church saint. A Roman Catholic Church holiday. Gee, I wonder what religion Santa Claus is. Sometimes a red stola. S-T-O-L-A. A long, loose tunic or robe with or without sleeves worn by women of ancient Rome so his nationality by dress is Roman he's wearing something now that's worn by women in ancient Rome so that's why he has Santa Claus you know what Santa means in Spanish it means female You got a guy coming as a woman. Now, that'd be widely accepted today in the world. They'll just call him a transgender. He doesn't know what he is. So the world would be more for Santa Claus than more for Jesus Christ, who knew he was a male. He knew he was a son. He knew he was a man. This guy comes in the title of a woman as a man. You're going to allow this guy among your children? You're going to allow this guy whose church, the, the, the priests go after the little altar boys? You're going to allow this Christian? You're a fool. 1804, John Pinter, New York historical, made woodcuts of, let me say St. Nicholas, the now equated Santa image. Uh oh. <coughs> Image. Here comes Image. John Pitar was a founder of the New York. Some of the words I told you to watch out in the beginning. Historical Society and the Massachusetts Historical Society. And is considered the father of historical societies in America. Historically in America, New York, they are now going to historically believe in a man that does not exist. And they're going to write history about a non-man. You know what they're doing with history today in the schools, the public schools, in the private schools, in the college? They're erasing it. They're changing it. They're, they're redoing history. A deeply religious man, John Pitter was one of the chief supporters of the General Theology Seminary and the founded and founded the American Bible Society. This guy who is religious, who has come up with the woodcuts of Mr. Nicholas as Santa Claus, is from a theological seminary and founded the American Bible Society. He was a vestry man. Well, this is not Baptist. You want to take a guess? For the Huguenot Church of New York City, for 34 years, and in his translation of the Book of Common Prayer, from English to French, is still used today. In 1822, the degree of LL period D period was conferred on him by Allegheny College. So this guy doesn't know the Bible. You know, he's got the American Bible Society because God said you're not to have images. The American Bible Study Society has a member that draws pictures or images of a myth man. You might as well draw pictures of Bigfoot, Loch Ness Monster, aliens, about a man that came from the roots of the Roman Catholic Church. This is the, the American Bible Society guy. Religious but not saved. Religion is man-made and Jesus Christ is God approved. You could not find vestry in God's church. But you can find it in the Bible, 2 Kings 10, 22. And he said unto him that was over the vestry, 
bring forth the vestments of all the worshipers of Baal. Oh, the American Bible Society guy is the worshipers of Baal. I wouldn't trust any Bible, anything religious that came from America. What came from America? Mary, Mary Baker Eddy. What came from America? The Mormons. What came from America? The Jehovah Witnesses. Need I go further? What came from America? The Charismatic Movement. The only place vestments is found it's an association with Baal, not God. Let's see if we can. Um, I think this will be a good time to stop right here. We're still going to talk about this guy, Pink Dard. But we're going to move on to a different, further subject. But. What do you say so far? Do we need to go further about this guy in Christianity? I mean, Christianity, born again, Bible believing Christians. Hasn't there been enough documented proof about an undocumented life of one man that comes from a particular church? Who has thrown out the Bible, who has changed the names of the Bible to their people, to their saints? To get the recognition that belongs to Jesus Christ and belongs to God. You do know Santa Claus takes after the Holy Spirit, don't you? He's, he's got to be a spirit to make all the house runs in one name. So, he's called Father Christmas, God the Father. He's in a boat. He calms the sea with a bunch of uh, men in the boat, sailors. As Jesus had done, documented, and the apostles wrote the story. And then he, he goes around in one night in a spirit and the Holy Spirit. You're on some dangerous ground here. You need to get off and get put on the solid rock. Jesus Christ and the hell with Santa.